Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on Morning at NTV with me, Romeo Busiku and Mala. We're heading into another exhilarating talk show segment that is Take Note. Now, for many, a parent being told about sickle cell anemia is an unending nightmare that could translate into huge health costs for the children, unending pain and a major strain on one's marriage. Today, we are privileged to have two people who have been fighting this ailment for a while. Major Lokia Mulumba of the U.S. Air Force, as well as Racy Nagawa of the Uganda Sickle Cell Association. Welcome to Morning at NTV. Good morning. 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 <laughs> so I'll start with uh, Major Lokia Mulumba. Help us understand what sickle cell anemia is. Well, um, sickle cell anemia is a blood disorder. It's inherited from your parents. You are born with it. You don't catch it. You don't get it from anywhere, but it's within your blood. It affects the red blood cells that causes a sickle shape during the times of stress. And when I talk about stress, I mean like surgery, um, sometimes extreme depression, sometimes financial issues, anything that can lead your body into a stressful situation, then the cells get affected, um, they become thick, and they cause like um, a sickle shape, like a new moon. Mm -hmm. And because God created um, the, the vessel, you know, the blood, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be around donut shape, going through, taking food, taking nutrients. But when this insult happens to the cell, then it gets stressed, gets dehydrated, it cannot go through, then it causes that some kind of a roadblock. Mm -hmm. So when it causes a roadblock, that means the areas beyond the roadblock will not get nutrients, mm -hmm. oxygen, and that causes pain. Mm -hmm. And the pain can be perceived in symptoms. Mm -hmm. I understand the, uh, the red blood cells will get even more weaker because they won't be getting the hemoglobin that they need, the oxygen Correct. that could be transported all over the body. Now, how can this be prevented? So, the, so sickle cell is such um, a general pro, um, topic. Um, this can be present, pre, uh, prevented in so many ways. Mm. Like for us right here, I'm medical, but in this situation, I'm not talking as a medical person. Mm. But in terms of the cons con a conference like home care, you can, you can do things at home to prevent, which is called home care management. You want to do those things before you hit the hospital or the urgent care. For example, you can drink water. When you drink water, you hydrate. You prevent that thickness that causes the block and the blockage and then crisis. And if it's mass massive, it can lead to death. Right. You can do that. The water is free. The other things you can do, if you have a friend that you trust, mm -hmm. you can talk to them about the stress, the depression. You got fired from work, and that can help. Remember, it's an insult. Whatever is causing the insult, you can work on that to reduce it. All right, so that's on management of if you already have sickle cell anemia, how to go about, you know, living a normal life like any yes. other person. All right. Um, Nagawa. Yes, yes Nagawa. Um, let's just get into, you know, making sure that the numbers don't multiply because as she mentioned, you're born with it. Yes. You actually get it from your parents. Yes. So especially in, uh, and we'll just not talk about the rural areas because even here in town, I've interfaced with people who don't know that sickle cell anemia is a reality mm -hmm. and it depends on the spouse you select and that will actually determine whether your child will be a cyclic or not. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, what is the testing process and how important is it for people who are just meeting and dating, hoping for something bigger, like, you know, making kids together? Like, like she's saying, sickle cell has two people involved. There is an actual sickle cell warrior. I call them warriors. Correct. And then there are carriers. So a carrier, you never know that you're a carrier. Yeah. We all, we, you might, have you ever tested? Yes, no. I have. Yeah, thank you. Have right. you ever tested? I've, I've ever. Oh, you should. You, you've ever? I've okay, ever, yeah. yeah. So you never know that you have the gene or you have the trait unless you test. So that is the problem. We don't know. That the, if you're a trait, it does not manifest. You don't show. Mm -hmm. You don't have mm -hmm. any si signs or symptoms that show that I'm a trait. So people meet unknowingly. And be because they're not informed and because they're not sensitized, we go on with our relationship. Most people come. I always encourage couples, please do not come to off. Do not go for a test after every other nitty gritties of your relationship have gone very far. Mm -hmm. You come to me when the wedding is mm -hmm. on, it is next week, and then you come, boom, and then I'm telling you this, it is a boomerang. You'll be like, oh, it is, and it's not a process that I'm going to tell you one day, and then you're okay. Mm -hmm. It is a slow process. Mm -hmm. When I tell you I need to follow you up, make sure you understand this concept, and then you'll be able to take it in and, and, and live with it. Right. You get it. Right. So, people 
do not take sickle cell. Even when I go to the communities, just to let them know, please, I, I plead to t for them to test why. Because they'll be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not sickle cell because I've never seen that in my family. Right. But I tell them, no, there are two people. Mm -hmm. The people you say that have sickle cell are mm -hmm. sickle cell anemic, but there is a trait. And you never know that you have a trait unless you test. Right. Even when you are mature, even right. when you are old, you never know that you have trait. Maybe you test even when you're 60. And you're like, ooh. I have a treat. <laughs> it's so true. I think I maybe my children inherit it. So mm. you start mm -hmm. from there. It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter what at any age you test, because even because it doesn't manifest. Right. You don't know that you have it right. unless you take test. So if a you were if you were born with it, you just have to live with it. Oh, Find correct. ways to live with it. Yes. yes. Now talk to us about some available treatments for this ailment. Oh, mm -hmm. so um, in regards to the available treatment, are we talking, is this question uh, geared to Ugandan international? So available treatment uh, worldwide, according to research, it's bone marrow transplant, mm -hmm. whereby they go in a, a, a normal person without sickle cell or a normal person with a trait who, are, who we call carriers. Yes. And they actually aspirate bone marrow from both the thighs mm -hmm. and um, they, they recondition the body of the person who is sick making sure they get like uh, chemotherapy, radiation, and put them into uh, um, a stressful environment whereby the sickle cell are killed in the entire body. And then they infuse the bone marrow of the right person. But I'm glad you're asking this question. A lot of Ugandans, Ugandans want to do this. They sell their houses and go somewhere to get this done. Mm -hmm. You just have to make sure whoever is doing that procedure mm -hmm. is a real doctor True. who went to real medical school and also is an expert in transplant. The other way that uh, is curable is through a cold blood. When a woman like me has a baby in America, they take off the cold blood and save it somewhere. And once the child is almost dying through sickle cell, they recondition with chemotherapy because mm -hmm. you have to go through the DNA and kill it take out all the cells and bang with like, you know, put in a lot of blood, you know, um, blood uh, transfusion wow. and then infusing the cold blood. And that happened to me as well. Wow. But that's in very developed countries and in advanced countries. But what you do, what I encourage Ugandans, you need to Google, go to Dr. Google, research the doctor. Are they really... Are they really doctors? Right. Are mm -hmm. they experts? Do they do this? Some of you have emailed me in box, your kids have died. I won't mention the countries. Mm -hmm. Now, in countries like Africa, we haven't really got these processes, yes, you know. Yes, but some rich expensive. people or some people go to GoFundMe and raise money, and it can be done. My daughter got a transplant about 10 years ago, wow. and she's doing well. Wow. Uh, in Uganda, now we do have some treatments like hydroxylia. Mm -hmm. You could give 500 milligrams or 1,000 milligrams. Mm -hmm. However, the mother and the father, you need to make sure the child blood is monitored to see the level of hydroxylia right. in the body. True. 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 Instead of saying, Bo you're taking, you're taking, you're taking, well, well you I'm have testing. Correct. Yes. And we are here like, yeah, yes, we have sickle cell. Yes, we have this. But what's your role in a home? Right. What do you ask the doctor when you mm -hmm. go there? So Why are you scared, scared right. of these doctors? So ideally, sickle cell anemia is curable. Correct. Oh, right. But in instances. Right. And you don't just say, oh, I'm going to get a bone marrow transplant. You really have to be to very be sick. Mm. Yeah. For you to get that Correct. Yeah. Because right. the procedure is not approved like worldwide. Okay. It's controlled as a research All procedure. Right. Ms. Nagawa. Yeah. Let's just stick to that conversation about couples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that, hey, um, just an assumption. Okay. Romy and I, for mm -hmm. example, let's assume we're a couple, maybe met. Um, I, I carry a trait. He doesn't. Does it mean, is there a danger with regards to our offspring um, if I'm just a carrier but not a warrior. Uh, warrior. Yeah. <laughs> and his what? No. Uh, and he, his kids. His kids. Uh, that yeah. is the best couple because uh, he's the best person to give you kids because his DNA, his genes free. are free from sickle cells. So you can have normal kids. As I said, a carrier is a normal person. You're normal. You're not the problem. The problem is the sickle cell yeah. anemia. Right. You get it. Mm. The carrier is okay. So if you're a carrier and you marry normal, it's okay. You might have kids that are carriers, but they are healthy. okay. All they right. are healthy, normal children. They actually consider them normal human beings. Mm -hmm. But you have to be cautious. You have to tell these kids when they grow up. Test them. Know who you have. Okay. Know who has inherited the gene from you. Right. So that you raise them 
to be careful. Okay, so what you're saying is that, okay, I'm a carrier, he's not a carrier. Yeah. If we have five children, not all the five will be carriers. Thank you. Some will be okay, mm -hmm. others will be carriers. Now, let's flip the ball. Let's talk of if I'm a warrior, I actually have sickle cell anemia disease, and he's okay. Does it mean our children will be okay, or some will be okay, others will actually be sick? No, what no, are we talking no, about? You're, you're a warrior, I'm a warrior. and he's normal. Yes. Remember, your A, A, no, your S, A, and his A, A, you're going to have all carriers. Aha. Uh -huh. You see? S A S, yes. your A A. I don't yes. have the board to help, help you understand that. Yeah. But you, you, the, you know that you, you can it. see the parts so right. Yes. Yes. All the kids are carriers. Carriers. But that uh, those are normal kids. So we encourage those that have sickle cell anemia mm -hmm. and those that are carriers to marry normal, normal people. Yes. All right. Now mm. the other third, uh, you know, mm. kind of scenario is, mm. I'm a carrier. He's a warrior. Yes. He's actually oh. a cyclic, but I'm a carrier. What happens to our kids? Yeah, that, is, that is, that is, that is, that is Jesus. That's the word. That is Jesus. You know that. That is when you yeah. have to yeah. you know, say, you know, make sure you go for this test. Correct. Once you meet, don't yeah. let the relationship get, get, get uh, deeper. No, don't ever. No one, there is no God. It's the given. <laughs> well, Major, look here from, from the account you've given us. It yes. really, really sounds like an excruciating ordeal when it comes to the health costs, you yourself, yes. you, you've uh, been affected by sickle cell anemia. My daughter. Your daughter too? Yes. You yourself too? No, I don't have sickle cell anemia. But your daughter? I have a trait. I'm the carrier. Oh, you're the carrier. carrier. Yes. My daughter, my husband is a carrier. My yes. first child got the disease. Mm -hmm. Like I said, mm. it's a disaster. Mm. So what are the most common symptoms among children? So among children, we talk about like a two-year-old. Uh, from First of all, the hemoglobin, she talked about, decreased so fast. In a normal child, the hemoglobin goes up to two years. So the first internal symptom you don't see in the blood, the fetal hemoglobin. I don't know if you hear, you know, breastfeed the children, breastfeed because of the fetal hemoglobin. The first sign the hemoglobin goes from a 12, which is normal to almost a five. Right. The physical outside signs is the swelling like um, burns on the arms mm. and the legs, weakness, fatigue, the growth is slowed, uh, crawling is slowed. That's the, you know, the young kids. Then around eight months to almost two months, you start seeing yellow eyes. Mm. Uh, the major thing you can see fever. Little things like a cold, they get a fever. Mm. You know, that's another thing. That's in children, pain and crying, fuzziness. As they get older, everybody gets pain. Like, okay. that's the, like the, the ordeal, the, everybody yeah. has to be So it's pain. an excruciating. Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. gets pain. As long as you don't do the right thing, so can, you get the pain. So mm. yeah. uh, let, let me, let me uh, pitch this question to you, uh, Ms. Ray Sinagawa. Yes. Can couples be helped? to tackle sickle cell anemia? Yes. Is there any sort of counseling? Oh, yeah. yeah. As I said, if, if you're a couple and you come into Uganda Sickle Cell Rescue Foundation offices and I test, and I maybe find either of you, carrier, and the other, I have to help you understand this. Because one of them will be like, hmm? Right. If, um, um, you know, there's always that situation. Right. You get it. Right. But I, if, if one of you is a carrier and the other one is not, I have to convince this other person, no, it is okay to get married to her. It's okay to continue a relationship. Even when I find both of you carriers, right. mm -hmm. that is another scenario. Mm -hmm. It's not in my place to tell you, yeah, separate. Right. No, no, no. I don't have to do that. Right. But I have to walk you through what you're going to the have, okay. express all the experiences that you're going to have in future right. so that you make an informed decision on your, your own okay. but i help you, right. you if i tell you sometimes you might not be able to talk when he's around i tell you please call me i can come to your home so counseling is critical critical all right we yes. have to take a short commercial break because you need to release major <laughs> you have another interview she um in our sister yeah television right start TV. so we have to take the short commercial break but the conversation still continues we are heavy on hashtag morning at ntv you can also tag us directly at malaki villodera and, and at Busiku Busiku Romeo. Romeo. look here we'll be going but we shall remain with Mrs. Nagawa to continue deliberating on the issue of sickle cell anemia after this short break. In a blink of an eye, a truck that was driving in the opposite direction all of a sudden lost control. I was stuck in my seat with my belt on, screaming, calling for help. I, I was desperate. I, I didn't know what to do. When I touched the, my forehead, I realized I had a lot of blood dripping in my forehead. That is when it occurred to me that 
Even the baby that I was carrying in my hands was no longer there. It was a bad feeling. I, I could not believe that my baby had gone. Uh, my wife, of course, without a seatbelt, she was lifeless at that time. The biggest, biggest mistake we made was not tightened behind. We always thought seatbelts are for the driver or, or for the co-driver, but even people that sit behind, I have learned that it's very important to wear a seatbelt. My name is Gloria Erumu. I urge you to always wear your seatbelts. Fred Deco, every life matters. This message was brought to you by Viva Energy and NTV Uganda. The Daily Monitor brings you the 16th Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic in Mukono, which will focus on coffee, cocoa, bananas, fish and horticulture with key interests in crop management and health, crop species, post-harvest handling and agribusiness. Come attend the farm clinic on Saturday, October 12th, 2019 at Nakori National Coffee Research Institute, Mukono. Time 7 a.m. Entrance, breakfast plus lunch are free. For exhibition or more information, please call 0775-197-050 or 0701 770983 sponsored by the Chinese Embassy in Uganda Bank of Uganda Stanbic Bank in partnership with NTV Naro and brought to you by the Saturday Monitor Seeds of Gold smarter farming for bumper harvests Welcome back and thank you for staying with us right here on Morning at NTV with me, Romeo Busuku and Mala. We are into a heated debate about sickle cell anemia. Mrs. Major Lakia Mulumba has left. Now we have Miss Resi Nagawa from Uganda Sickle Cell Association to continue deliberating on this issue. Now, Miss Nagawa, what are some of the achievements you can boast of as the Sickle Cell Association of Uganda? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm proud. Uh, I'm proud to have the best um, board members, the, the, the best sponsors of this uh, of my organization, that is Hotel Africana, Roofings Group, and AGT, because of their effort, and Major Lukia Mulumba, mm -hmm. because cause she is the one that, uh, she was a co-founder, and I'm proud to say that with their help, we were the first organization or people in the country to actually bring a sequeling test. Okay. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah, we, we, we introduced a sickling test. Okay, it was existing out there in the different countries, but it wasn't yet. And we were the first people to test for sickle when cell. Was this? Uh, that was 20, 2014. Mm -hmm. 2014. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm right, yeah, 2014. And I'm proud to say that we are testing people All right. free of charge. You do not incur any cost. We don't, you don't have to pay anything. You just have to you head just, over to Uganda uh, Sickle Cell Association. Yes, and then you test for sickle cell. Right. Every month, to, we test twice a month and then we go in the fields we go in uh, i'm proud that we can move and be able to reach out to every soul okay. out across there the across country. the country so how many and people have you screened so, uh, far? so far in my uh, in my records i think uh since i started sick, uh, testing i think i have about six thousand people right. six thousand people from yes. 2014 yeah Six thousand people. Of testing? And the process of testing is, um, it, you know, it's it's a box. Uh, I just have to take your blood sample, and then I, I, I there's a reagent and a buffer, and then you, you know, I just have to put uh, science, and then I have yeah. to really, because if if if, and then if if uh, if I put the, your your blood in that buffer, I cover so that oxygen does not go in. So mm. if you have a trait, the the, the blood would dismantle. Okay. And then the buffer will become thick, mm -hmm. and then I'll be able. I will not, th there's a line that we see, you know, it, will not, it won't be visible. Mm -hmm. Then you're a carrier. And if I can be able to see, that means your blood did not dismantle. That means right. it's you're okay. Yeah. There, it's a process. Uh, next time you come to my office, and then we need to do it practically. <laughs> yeah, and then I come and demonstrate. Right. And then the other thing I'm proud of is uh, we've held four successful conferences and we've seat over 3,000 to 4,000 people right. every time. And four successful conferences. Four right. successful conferences at Hotel Africana, Nai Hall. Right. We sit the whole and people sit down like we all over the country. People from all over, you know, come just to come together and realize, you know what, uh, you know, with those conferences, we, we bring them together. Right. You know, before people know that my neighbor has a child, this neighbor has a child, but when they come together, you get to know that, oh God, I'm not alone. So I can actually 
I so have a neighbor, I have, I have friends that yes. I can relate to and help me live so with this condition. So you understand that you're not in it alone? Yeah. It's well, and I understand thing. when it comes to conferences that you've been setting up, four of them, I think the fifth will be tomorrow. Oh, yeah. At yeah. Hotel Africa. Yes. So tell us, what should the people expect at this conference? Oh, Which this will be running from 7.30, I imagine, to 4.30 yeah. p.m.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is one of a kind because we realize we've talked about everything. We've mm -hmm. talked about screening. We've talked everything, about yes. adherence to drugs. We've talked about everything. But we've realized parents and caretakers do not know how to take care of these children at home. Yet, the first doctor is your mother. The first doctor Indeed. is your caretaker. If they understand how to take care of you, you're going, you're going to have limited, uh, you, you, the, the frequency of you visiting the hospital will minimize. Right. You get it. So we realize that we need to teach the caretakers, the families, the communities at large, how to take care of these children mm -hmm. so that they can live a normal life in the communities. And it's a pity that you've said that uh, the conference is always filled to capacity and it becomes an information hub where you share this information with the people who attend. But we already talked about the testing and it's good that you've said it's a pain-free process yes, because a majority shy away from some tests because of that pain factor. Yeah. So it's a pain-free process, quite simple. Um, and let's talk about treatment within um, you know, people who are actually sick. What are the treatment options? She actually mentioned by the cost factor of mm -hmm. treatment. And um, what is the role of the association in regards to just aiding as many people as possible to go through treatment? Okay, now uh, with treatment, treatment, sickle is quite expensive because drugs, the drugs are expensive because hydroxyra is 1,000 a pill. Wow. 1,000? Yet it's the best on the market. If, if Are we talking about a thousand dollars? No, a thousand, no, a th a thousand shillings. But wow. that is very expensive to LA, right? Local person. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to help. We are, we are, we are, we, okay, I wish the government can come up and then maybe reduce those costs because yes. it's really, uh, it's really expensive. They take a lot of drugs. They need a lot of monitoring. As I said, hydroxyl monitoring hydroxyl is also expensive. You need to visit the doctor every time. And it's not co it's not cheap to call to visit a doctor every time mm. to check all the internal organs of your body. Mm. You have to take folic acid every day. You have to take antimalarials every month. You have to take painkillers. Maybe if the pain is intense, that is every day. And, and that is for managing, managing. not treatment. Not treatment. Not treatment. Wow. You cannot treat sickle cell. Okay, it's you have to manage. But when you master the management skills of sickle cell, you can oh. Be the kids are amazing. The kids that I have in my office that come in my office and then we, we help the parents manage the disease. They're amazing. Okay. You know, well, it's just about managing. Do not do this. Do that. Do not eat this. Eat that. Do not take that. No. Mm. Keep hydrated. Do this. Do that. All the nitty gritties. Right. And believe me, with sickle cell, if you keep hydrated, that is the first medicine. Okay. First medicine is water, not, ju not juice, not, okay, juice, yeah, but not soda, not preservatives. Right. Fresh juice. But water. the bo most, most important thing is water, because mm -hmm. everybody can afford, not everybody's going to afford juice. So water. right about now, if someone out there is dealing with sickle cell anemia and they do not have the money to get these very expensive drugs, they could start with the water. Water is the start. Okay. It is the start. It is the best it is affordable everybody can. I, I worry, that's why we're gonna do uh, we, there's a lot of activities that we're gonna do at the sickle cell we're even gonna give them bottles water bottles because so that you can be able to come with your water from home so that you don't have to buy renzori or vero because that is also another cost that mm -hmm. mine can be used to do something right. else carry your water because it's because i understand the name of the carry event water. will be hydrate nyua kumazi, kumazi. Mm -hmm. hydrate yes. nyua kumazi will be the theme for yes. tomorrow's conference later at the Hotel Africana from 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Yeah, now, I must commend you mm. for the job well done at the Uganda Sickle Cell Association. Personally, <laughs> I had a friend who was, you know, dealing with this problem. Yeah. I think it was primary seven, what, Shimoni. Uh, it was a very young girl, but she didn't make it two years later. So I understand the magnitude of this problem and it's affecting so many people. Yeah. And you might agree with me when I say that there is need to increase awareness oh, yeah. to sensitize communities yeah. on how to deal with the challenges that come to, be, uh, to, uh, to, to dealing with sickle cell anemia. Yes, what sure. are you doing about this? Uh, it's of course like conferences. We open up, we do these conferences so that we, we can be able to reach out to everybody, mm -hmm. to, to, to teach people. We mm -hmm. do medical camps, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, CSR so that we, uh, sorry, CMEs so that we teach the medical students. We go to medical, so that, you know, they need to come out of school knowing how 
to at least we need to tackle the nonsense by the way right. the medical schools because right. they need to come out of school knowing how to deal with this disease because the past people that came out of school did not really really take it into consideration but now we have to also mentor these nurses and the doctors that are coming out of school right. to, to to consider sickle cell management skills so that they can be able to help the patients okay. and yeah and then this conference even teaching the people sensitizing management skills so it's a lot of we do outreach as we All go right. out we we don't sit in office by now it's rare to see me in an office let me ask you nagawa yes. um over and above you know sensitizing people making sure that even the health experts are you know um up to beat with the developments in the health sector and how to tackle this treatment surgery bone, bone marrow transplant how much does that, co does that cost, cost and does the association maybe meet some patients halfway in footing the cost <laughs> what no, happens no, okay, okay now I'm going to tell you one thing. As an association, we I do not get involved in two bone marrow transplant. It's I can tell you yeah. about it. And direct the person where to go to get I it. I can't even direct you where to go get it. Why? Because Why? Paris, okay, let me say, if anything happens to your child, mm. you t you'd say Uganda Sickle Cell Rescue Foundation recommended me mm. to this doctor. You get it. Mm -hmm. So all I tell you is there is this process and this is what it is. You're going to do this, do that, do that. But please, yeah, go to these countries, these countries, these countries, do this bone marrow, but look for your own right. doctor. So I empower you to research. Go do your own research and understand the process. It is not easy. Chemotherapy, people do not survive that. You get it. Right. So you need, as a, I, I don't want you to rely on me entirely. I'm, okay, now everything that happens, Tracy or, or Lucky or right. this. No, I, I tell you that, it. yeah, mm -hmm. I tell you that, yes, the process is there and this country does this, but go do your own on research. research and do decide, 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 decide the center on, for yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. How much are we looking at for a bone marrow transplant? Uh, it, 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 it varies. It's a lot of money. I wouldn't even put a cost to it. <laughs> every, every country has, and now... India is the, okay. I know India is cheaper. And I heard it's a very excruciating uh, procedure. Yeah, so uh, it is fine. Oh, chemotherapy is painful. Oh my God, I've seen kids go but through it. But the success rates after trans after transplant. Oh, you know, most yeah, people have the, those success stories and those unsuccessful t stories. So okay. it but so it, that's why I'm telling it's a decision. I don't have to convince you mm. to take your child for the bone marrow. You need to understand the process. It's costly, first of all. You need to understand that. The psychological torture that you go through. I've seen parents that shave off their hair so that they... I, I remember a major... Shave off her hair just to look like the daughter so that they know we, we are in this yes, together. Okay. So parents have to go through a lot of things with their kids. Even the kids that's going to donate the moral themselves also need... It's also another part. Mm. And just to look for a donor, it's also not easy. Cause so to start, that psychological to start with the, When you want a bone marrow, the first step, donor if right. you can't have a donor you can't do it wow. so yes. miss racy nagawa what are some of the challenges you've uh, experienced while dealing with the uh, sickle cell anemia a stigma the stigma or the stigma uh, yeah the, the the kids in schools especially the, the society doesn't has not yet really really accepted them you know i've had uh, i have a lot of successful or like land degree holder so, sickle cell anemic warriors mm. and they are failing to get jobs because everybody when they would and they're very when they're, they're committed people i work with them they're committed they're very knowledgeable but the employers do not see that in them they think that that word sicklers they right. think they are they can't produce anything but they're producers right they're innovative mm. i worked with an executive director called sharif to and every time i look at everything he does i'd be like wow mm. he has gone miles now he's in the u.s you know, d just because we believed in him, now he has gone very far. And he's a, he's a success story in our right. organization. Indeed, indeed, and I can attest yeah, to that. The yeah. girl I told you about, she yeah. was really, really brilliant. Yes. Besides this sickness, the girl was super awesome. Yeah, mm. society. So, mm. number one, the mm. challenges could be? The number one uh, challenge you hit? Stigma. Stigma, stigma number two. challenge in society. Stigma, and, Yeah, two. and then the other thing, the, the, the fact that parents, there's still... There's still that, uh, what, how can I say it, lay back from the parents, like they don't want to come out. Yet the more we come out, the more we get the world to know that we are there. Because, you know, sickle cell is not like HIV. It's mm. out there. Even when you go, it's hard to source for funds for sickle cell. But it's really, mm. really hard to convince someone to give you funds for sickle cell, especially out there. You get Because right. the government needs to make the world know that it is actually a problem 
in Uganda. Mm. I'm talking about Uganda here. It is actually the government needs to address it. They need to let the diaspora, the countries out there know that this is a problem so that we actually can get funds to help these people right. live a normal so life. So if the parents right. do not acknowledge they have a problem, yeah, they will not so, get help. So if, like, if I come up with a conference like this and then I call and they do not come, uh, mm -hmm. would it's you come the, to such a the, conference? Yes. Yeah, would you come? Yeah. I would not have made the noise yet. If you come, we can it is a movement, mm -hmm. it is a force. Mm -hmm. Be like, no, we are here. We need help. Mm -hmm. We, uh, I need that help to make my job right. mm -hmm. easier. Okay. I need that help to make all this easy. Miss Nagawa, yeah. you know, you've talked of, about the challenges, the stigma, yeah. um, parents just Laid being in, parents. Den yes, mm -hmm. in denial for quite, for quite a long time until, you know, they get out of that box and agree that, hey, we can manage this. And if we get the finances, we can treat sickle cell anemia is treatable yep. and curable. Mm. Let's talk about the life cycle, the life expectancy oh. of a sickler. Um, we can start with that one who cannot afford treat, um, you know, cure, that cure options, the treatment options, someone who can just manage the condition. What is their life expectancy? Oh, there's no life expectancy in sickle cells. As I said, I have, I have 60 year old mm, a grandma. Grandma, like she mm -hmm. had kids. So and someone can live Oh for my long. God, I wish. You come to the conference, you want to see all these people. Right. 60s, 45, the best is 80. Actually, she just died mm. last week. And it was because of something. Because they didn't have fuel to take her to the hospital. And she didn't go through the treatment option. Uh -huh. It was just managing. It was the managing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It okay. was managing. So in, 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 in Romeo's uh, friend's case, who died mm -hmm. uh, at quite Two a young age, later. what would you say are some, are some she, of those contributing know, factors? Okay, like I said, like I said, you, you know, and the adolescents go through a lot of things because now that's the process they need to, I don't know, they're going to adulthood. They don't want people to notice that they have sickle cell and then they drop doing the right thing. Oh. They drop doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So, stress in school. If after exams, people, uh, even you yourself, it, during exams, it's like really, really stressful and they do not need that. So, what, ad so what advice do you have for people out there who are dealing with sickle cell anemia right now? right now is uh if you're stressed please talk to someone that is the most important thing if you're stressed and you feel like you need to there's something we are here you're gonna see cell is there please come into our offices and we just talk about this and please follow the doctor's orders when the doctor tells you you need to see me please go see the doctor do the right thing take your medicines in time in time if you're supposed to take it at 8 30 let it be at 8 30 that is management do not say to them taking at 8.30, tomorrow, okay, at 7. Right. You need to be consistent in how you take your medication so that you manage your, 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 your body very well. You need to know that I need to, my God, warriors take water. Mm. You, when you take water, you're going to avoid jaundice, that is the yellowing of the eyes. Right. You're going to avoid strokes. You're going to avoid infections. You're going to avoid a lot of things. So please, please. Hydrate because the most dangerous things in sickle cell is dehydration and anemic. Mm. Being anemic and dehydrated is the worst. Mm -hmm. So please, warriors, do not wait to feel thirsty to, take, to take water. water. And I'm happy that you mentioned that. Hey, um, there's still hope. If there are parents out there who have sicklers, you can manage this condition and these children can live to old age. Just managing is enough. You don't have to kill yourself because you can't afford treatment. You don't oh. have to. All right. So, you don't Nago, have to. We've, we've basically been talking about what parents can do, what the sicklers themselves can do. Yes. In your opinion, what can government do to help you help these people? Now, I urge the government one thing to make noise put more finding into non-communicable diseases because there are also diseases they need to make noise so that the world gets to know that this is a problem in uganda believe me it is hard out there just to source for solace for funds yes it is really mm -hmm. hard and then they need also to um i need them to open sickle cell clinics around the world because everybody travels all over to Mulago because it is the best that we have. Mm -hmm. we, they need to equip all the hospitals, center for health center for all the needy, nitty gritty hospitals so that they have equipped doctors for sickle cell so people do not have to travel. Mm -hmm. I really feel bad when I go to Mulago and someone has come from Lakapidipiliti just referred to Mulago. That is a long, long distance. Mm -hmm. I've been to islands and people travel on water just to get to 
Chirudu or to get to uh, Jinja Hospital to get medicine. So the, they need to, to the network hospitals that right. they, they need to put people, the, they need to open up a lot, a lot, a lot of sickle cell clinics, mm -hmm. you know, and avail them with doctors, mm -hmm. equipped, experienced doctors and nurses that can manage mm -hmm. The disease. All right. So yeah. in a nutshell, as we wrap this up, uh, the event is happening tomorrow. Oh. Hotel Africana it is. Yeah. Any tickets? Is it free of charge? Oh. What should happen? Oh, tomorrow? Yeah, it is free. You know it. We've always done this. It is free of charge. You don't have to pay anything. You're going to be fed light lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you want to be hydrated. The water is going to be there. We don't give sodas because it's not the theme. We need to keep water uh, the theme. So we, we water is going to be there. Uh, speakers are going to be there, free sickle cell testing. Uh, there are going to be doctors to talk to you. Right. Amazing, amazing topics to talk about. So it's going to be nice. It's going okay. to be good. We have water bottles to give out. I wouldn't want to say this out because you would come for the water bottles. <laughs> I want you to come to understand what right. dehydration means. I want you to come not to get medication. I want you to come and learn, learn and do the right thing all so right. that you help your child live a normal life. So I, I, I want to thank all my sponsors. Oh my God, I can't, I can't help to thank BMK, Dr. Blay Mwanga Chibidige, Hotel Africana, Roofings, Mr. Lalani. Oh my God, they're amazing all people. Mr. Ansubuga, Erostos, uh, AGT Group. Those people have been with us like since day one and they've never left us. They make sure we go out there right. to educate. They make sure these conferences are done on time. They make sure offices, space is paid for. They make sure we are paid. They right. make sure everything is on point. But thank you so much, my bosses. And thank we you wish both. you and we yes. wish you all the best come <laughs> tomorrow. Indeed. And Indeed. congratulations on what you're mm -hmm. doing to ensure that the country does fight this. And yeah. them that are battling with the same actually yes. see a future and a hope mm -hmm. with regards to the same. That was uh, Miss Resi Nagawa um, coming from the the Uganda Sickle Cell Association. Thank you so much You're and welcome. all the best. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We welcome. wish you all the best. Thank right you. about now, we are going to link into our reporter, Stephen Bide, to give us the latest when it comes to traffic. Bide, what's the latest this morning, please? Let us in. Yes, Romeo and Mala, they are in studios. This is Ginger Road. I'm just right here at Chambogo, one of the lowlands along the Ginger Road. I'm just standing next to the fuel and service station. And of course, uh, there are so many car bones around this Chambogo area. One of the areas uh, that has also, uh, we should say, one of the low lands and uh, lower class residence, uh, res residences, uh, apart from the Chambogo University, where many students, of course, uh, get to when they're uh, coming from the Ginger Road or coming from the seaside. But here, uh, many vehicles here have been parked here for more than 10 minutes. And now, the traffic officers who are at uh, the Spear Junction at Nakawa, if you are able to leave, if they let you go, you, even if you are at Chambogo, you'll be able to cross the Spear Junction. But when they stop you, you may find that the traffic congestion is as far as Chireka because they stop you for more than 15 minutes because, of course, they are letting other vehicles coming from either Mbuya side or those coming from uh, that side of Nchinda through the stretcher that is the Nchinda road uh, connecting towards Nakawa through the Spear Junction. They also have to let them across uh, that Spear Junction there. But that, of course, means that for you coming from Banda, the, uh, for lower uh, upper side of Chambogo and Chireka, as well as Nambole and Bioge, that side, you find it really, really hard to cross this particular point because vehicles get piled up in a bump, very heavy bumper to bumper situation that is almost and uh, makes you wait uh, up to uh, that side next to the road linking you towards the Chambogo University. But for you coming from the city direction, if you are trying to use uh, this main ginger road, just you know, after crossing the heavy traffic jam that is around the Nakawa Market and the Stretcher Junction, then the rest of the road linking you towards this Chambogo and Banda is all clear because I've been coming from the Wayogere roundabout, coming towards this particular point, and so less of congestion. Say for you coming from Chinawataka, trying to join Chireka there, there is that straight, that very heavy traffic jam also for you. And uh, this area, which has many electric poles and electric wires, doesn't have even a single lighting system or street light. I think this should be worked upon. The Nakawa Division authorities, their engineer, uh, immediate engineering department should be uh, looking into this because there are many people who fly on this road as pedestrians heading towards either band or especially in the evening hours. And when, when it gets dark, 
there, it's a really, really puts them at risk of being uh, at, the, at the mercy of uh, other pedestrians, especially when you see that there are many youngsters who are not working and end up snatching bags from the women that makes them at the, at the mercy or puts them at the risk of being of losing uh, their property like mobile phones, bags and the like. Uh, this should be worked upon at the traffic lighting system because there are many poles here, electric poles, electric poles so they can tap into and make uh, at least for them some street lights. This is the traffic update coming to you live from Chambogo along the ginger road with me, Omuntua Wansi, the man on the ground, Stephen Mbide with Arnold Seremba on camera and taking you back to studio for a short commercial break and the rest of the quality programming comes your way with Mala and Romeo there. Safe journey.